I can see some people have found me. Hi, Laurie. Everybody, uh, it's lovely to see. Hi, Jonathan. Hi. Just working with the bowls. As um, people find the live, it's been a while since I did last did a live. Enjoying some of the sounds from the, the alchemy bowls um, to uh, just bring everybody in this evening. We're in this run up to the um, the full moon, so we can start to feel the energies that are beginning to to get more and more intense as we come to the exactitude of the. Um, of the full moon tomorrow. So, hi Elias, hi. Um, a watery moon, yeah, a moon in Cancer. It's got a lot of emotion to it. And of course we, we can feel that and we can also see what's happening um, in various places on the earth. I know that there are tsunami warnings out on the uh, west coast of the states and also in Australia and uh, with the big underwater earthquake uh, around Tonga in this last couple of days. We are likely, as we move into this year, hi Agnes, hi. Um, uh, and you've got gale warnings here today. Oh my goodness. I think that, you know, as we move into 2022, there are certainly going to be more extreme weather events. And, um, so excuse me, I just don't want to make sure that I don't, don't catch light here at the back. Um, uh, that you know, my, as my good friend, the astrologer Pam Gregory has been mentioning that um, with Neptune and Jupiter meeting in Pisces, the you know the modern and the ancient ruler of Pisces uh, in, in another water sign coming up in April, that actually water is going to be a really big theme for us going into this year. And you can look at that on a lot of levels. Hi, Laura. Um, there are a lot of different levels to this as to how we will experience the it, our connection between the inner and the outer realms. But without a doubt, we are coming into a powerful, powerful year. And I think many like me found the end of last year quite a, um, a contractive energy. And this year has really only just and just be beginning to start. And of course, this is the full, first full moon of 2022. And as I say, it's in Cancer. So we are experiencing perhaps quite intense emotions. And also what's seemingly being pushed up is anything that is residual. 
that we haven't yet um, finally dealt with. It's coming to the surface as a gift from the universe for us to be able to pay attention and to lighten our load, to be able to travel light as light as we move into this year. What is there left that now needs to be released? And um, as some of you saw my Facebook post this morning, today has really felt to be a day of preparation clearing for this full moon. Um, and I've had to deal with a pile of papers that I've been dancing around for the last two or three months. And um, of course, I found some absolute gems in it that I hadn't <laughs> known where they were. Anyway, let's have a look and see what the roses might um, offer us as inspiration as we move into these next few weeks of this um, new energy of 2022. So I'm asking for the wisdom of the roses. Um, we we are in a we were in a period where um, Mercury, um, sorry, not Mercury. Mercury is retrograde, but also Venus is re retrograde. And Venus, of course, has got a big connection. The Venus cycles, the Venusian cycles, and the Rosabella that she creates in the heavens have got a very strong connection to the frequency of the roses. So I find it really fascinating that this process of of her being in the underworld and not rising out and visible as the morning star until the 29th. We're still in this place of reviewing, renewing, reactivating and actually mm, reconnecting with our own sense of our process and our journey this year. Really, really important for us to have that connection within. So let's see what the roses might like to offer us. So the first rose that's come up tonight is rose six. And rose six is this beautiful, luscious, coral energy that sits on the sacral chakra. The sacral chakra is the point within the body where we hold the stories around self-love, self-value, self-esteem that holds our sense of our, ourselves, our sexuality, our sensuality. And of course, it is the procreative uh, chakra. And that can be in all sorts of different ways. It can be the fact that you're birthing a new vision, a new product, a new pathway, a new course. You may be in some other creative endeavor that you are in the process of doing all of the seeding, all of the behind the scenes work, that when Mercury and Venus go direct and Uranus, the planet of U-turns and change and electrical energy has changed and has gone stationary direct today. So, you know, there's a, there's a lot of Mm, still working behind the scenes that will start to gain traction as we move into the new year, in, further into the new year. So if you look at um, Mercury, we'll, we'll eventually go direct on the 3rd of um, February. So we are still in this process of renewal. We are still in the process of seeding and renewal and doing the behind the scenes work for us, our work to be taken forward. So you know, this rose is really saying, you know, well, well what are you wanting to birth? What, because it's not just um, physical birthing of children in the sacral chakra, it's what are we wanting to, to birth creatively? So I invite you just to perhaps put a hand on your higher heart chakra and just breathe in the energy of this particular rose, the frequency of this particular rose. Because each of the roses are messengers, they're carriers, they are guides and mentors 
that help us to see what might be revealed in that message. What message does she have for you around your sacral chakra energy? As I say, self-love, self-value, self-esteem. Are you taking enough time for self-care? Is there anything else that you could be doing that is going to assist you at this time to uh, really enter 2022 as she starts to gain traction in, in the beginning of February? Is there anything that actually you are really needing to nourish and nurture? So just breathe her in and see if she's got a message for you. Has she got uh, any words, any guidance that she can offer you at this time for you to be the best version of yourself in this year, to be able to shine your light? Actually, I'm just going to play the, the bowl that activates the sacral chakra. This particular bowl works with the sacral and the adrenals. a beauty to be able to connect with. So I hope she's been able to give you some guidance, some inspiration perhaps. Let's have a look and see what the second rose might be that wants to come forward this evening. So we're asking for the wisdom of the roses. And the rose that's come forward now is Rose Angel 6. And Rose Angel 6 sits on the throat chakra and she is one of the roses that are part of the Rose Angel set. And this rose is all about speaking your truth. She is all about aligning from the heart. And when we speak from the heart, it is received by the heart. So this rose is calling for a consideration that actually words have got power. And the master knows when to speak and when actually silence has more power and is the more aligned pathway. So this rose is inviting you to consider very carefully about the timing of when you speak. When it's really imperative that you do speak and when actually there is a time for silence. And it's very interesting, many years ago, one of the um, teachers that I was working with made a comment about sharing ahead of time. That actually, when we are gifted with insight or guidance, sometimes there is a time when we actually need to do that inner work and we need to process that within ourselves before we actually share with anybody else what we're planning to do. There is a time when, when there is, um, it can dissipate the energy of what we're working with when we share it ahead of time. So there must have been a reason for somebody who's on the call this evening to hear that because it's not often that I speak of it. So the Rose Angel is, is, um, 
is connect the rose angels are connected to the five wounds to love of abandonment betrayal denial judgment and separation and this rose sits on the throat and she's all about the heart wound of denial and around this point of speaking and speaking only truth because truth has got a vibration and we know when we're not speaking that from a heartfelt truth oh that's lovely serena so serena's saying that uh, she's also feeling this super strong moon but she's working with this this rose as well this weekend this is a perfect perfect rose to be working with as we we move through this window of waiting till it's my time to shine waiting till it's time to step forward and share what it is that you have been incubating and working with in this venus retrograde and in the um in the mercury retrograde perfect perfect energy so once again if you'd like to put your hand on your higher heart and just tune in on this particular rose And just feel her energy on the throat chakra. And just see if she has any whispered words for you. Just be open to receive any inspiration that she may or guidance that she may have for you. And just to also add that the throat chakra is the higher octave of the sacral chakra so when we express from our truth it is totally aligned with self-love self-value and self-esteem which sit in the foundation of who we are this is a beautiful rose and often overlooked actually in the oracle deck but very, very powerful. Okay, so let's just see what the third rose is that wants to come forward this evening to be shared. So again, we're asking for the wisdom of the roses. And the rose that's come as the third rose is the Stella Gateway. And the Stella Gateway is the entry point to Akasha. She sits right above the Soul Star. And she is that place of ask and it shall be given. So when we ask for divine wisdom, purely from the heart it is given there is a no optioner from the universe that anything that is sincerely called forward comes now it might come through symbolic sight it might come through the gifted words of another it might come the answers might come from picking up a book and just randomly opening the pages. The answers might come from shuffling an oracle deck and pulling a rose or pulling a card from the oracle deck. But when you, when you ask sincerely, the universe will do everything that it can to make sure that you get the answer. So... This rose is an absolute beauty. She's a really sort of etheric, ethereal uh, energy and uh, a beautiful portal to be working with at this time. She is a transducer of the higher divine codes of light to bring them down to a receivable wave so that we don't get fried. 
and the clearer we are, the clearer the heart is, the more open the crown is, the more activated the soul star is, and the more open the stellar gateway is. None of them work independently, they all work together. So I invite you to just have a tune in on this particular rose and just feel her energy. Feel how as you connect in with your higher heart and this point of unconditional love in the higher heart that you can feel the activation on your crown chakra and get a sense of the soul star, which is where your fingertips would touch if you extended them up above your head. And that portal at the soul star activates to enable more of your I am presence, your true divine essence to be received in body. And as the soul star opens, so the stellar gateway opens to allow higher dimensional aspects of your oversoul, your higher soul self, to be activated and received. It's only through the 5D heart that we can activate and have connection with the higher dimensional aspects of our cells that we have stored from previous lifetimes. And this is one of the joys for this time is that the more we are able to stay in that field of frequency, the more we are able to bring forward the energies that we actually came to walk with in this particular time. So as I say, she is a beauty to work with. And she is the stellar gateway. For those of you that have had experience of um, Akashic readings, this is, or do you do that yourself? This is the access portal that allows for you to have that information. It is the field of frequency where all is known. So, this is our three roses for the full moon in Cancer. Rose six, sacral chakra, calling us into that grounded presence of sense of who who I am. Who am I inside the tribe? What Jung would call the individuation. How grounded and how embedded am I in myself? This, of course, this rose connected with the uh, base chakra is very much the field of frequency of Mary Magdalene. Us call, calling in these higher keys and codes of light and anchoring them in the body so that ascension is actually a descension into the body, bringing these higher keys and codes in to spiritualize the physical. But you can see she is just beautiful, beautiful energy to work with. And calling you to connect in with self-love, self-value, self-esteem, to have compassion and kindness to yourself first. And um, so that you actually make sure that you've got good self-care. Really important that you have good self-care at this time. So is there anything else that you can you can offer yourself a walk by the sea, a walk in the in the forest? You know, some some TLC, really, really important. And that sort of allows us to bring new things to birth. You know, that does isn't necessarily, as I've said, uh, you know, physical babies can be, but it also can be that you are birthing a new business, it can be 
you are birthing a new created, creative endeavour. It could be that you are birthing a new version of yourself. This is the power of Rose 6 and what she invites us to. Then we've got Rose Angel 6. She who is calling us into the attention. If you can see her perhaps a little better up there. She's calling us to bring clear attention to our words, knowing that our words have power. But also the fact that because she's sitting with the throat chakra, she is all about the truth and knowing the frequency of truth. And when we speak truth, it's we can feel it in our bodies at a cellular level. We know when something's off, whether we're receiving it or whether we're speaking it. And this rose calls us into that alignment because mm, the rose angels are transformers for these five wounds, but she's the wound of denial. And when we don't speak our truth, when we don't share our truth, we are denying another from really knowing who we are. It's only when we share from integrity and from our hearts that another actually knows who we are. So this is the, this is the time where there is, there is no wriggle room. We have to show up in total authenticity to what's going on for us and, and, and who we are. And then we have integrous relationships and we have flow in our lives. And the third rose this evening, the stellar gateway, knowing that actually we are always guided. We are always guided by the blessings of source. And when we come into this higher heart energy and connect in from the heart to the, to the pineal gland, to the crown, and allow the soul star to open up, then the stellar gateway will activate as well. And we come to this place of ask and it shall be given. When we ask with sincerity and an open heart, a true heart, then we are gifted the answers that we seek. So, powerful energies for the full moon. This is a deep moon that's asking us to really get clear of anything else that might still be residual in our fields. And it's another opportunity. You know, the moons, the full and the new moons are pulse points. They're contraction and expansion points for some, but they're pulse points on our journey. So, Listen to the sounds of the alchemy bowls. Gorgeous, thanks Jacqueline. Yeah, number six. This feels very strong this year as it does feel around the Divine Feminine and in particular Mary Magdalene. But for me, number six holds the, the, the two energies, the, the weave as above, so below, masculine, feminine, but perhaps also Mary Magdalene and Mother Mary, the, mother, the, the Rosa Mystica that comes from the mix.
thank you for joining me this evening. So say, I haven't done a live rose reading for seemingly weeks, probably a couple of months. There's just been no energy to do that. So um, I was really delighted when there was clearly um, the energy to do that this evening. There was, you know, a clear, a clear yes. And um, there's some new things that are happening um, in Roseland. <laughs> and um, uh, they've just put up two new classes. There's a live um, uh, visioning class here that is going to be connected to the Venus cycle and um, I've put a three-part class in that is called the Mary's and the Rosa Mystica so that will be um, an, a really lovely class to be to be part of and I've also got some new things that are happening that I will be sharing more of in a couple of weeks that are around the Rose Alchemy uh, way of the rose attunements and um, I'm shifting the the way that I'm sharing the rose work for 2022 um, so it's really quite exciting and interesting to see how that's going to flow thank you for joining me I feel very blessed that you were able to join me this evening thank you so much and I hope that one of those roses is at least um, gave you a, a nudge or some inspiration in some way or another and um, look forward to seeing you again soon much love and rosy blessings bye for now bye bye